Boy and his dogs here playing Gods Will Be Watching. We're going to go through chapter 3 today. In the previous chapter, we had to endure a long uh, torture sequence where, over the course of 20 days, our two main characters had to try to talk their way out of being hurt. And um, I thought the episode was a little too long. I felt like it could have accomplished the same thing in maybe about 10 minutes less. So. I'm hoping that the next episode's a little bit more well paced and we'll see how it goes. Chapter 3 Everdusk. Dog. Welcome back, Sergeant Burden. Allow me to say it on Ichuk's behalf, we're glad you came back in one piece. But it's time to get back to work. Your failure in infiltrating Xenolifer's ranks and sabotaging their goals has changed the rules of the game. <coughs> this has left us vulnerable. Xenolifer can now potentially commit a biological attack using the Medusa virus at any time. But sir, don't, don't even start. Listening to your excuses is what put you in this situation to begin with. We have to be ready to fight any biological threat. That's your main and only objective now, Sergeant. Is that clear? Yes, sir. On your next mission, you'll have to spend several months on the surface of... Let's see if we can pronounce this. Sinikos. If you read the mission briefing, you'll know that Sinikos is the home world of the Medusa virus. You'll be leading an Everdust science team whilst occupying the planet. Your mission won't be complete until you find a cure for the Medusa virus. <coughs> Sounds more like a punishment to me. Do you have a problem with your assignment, Corporal Maslow? Two soldiers to look after three scientists and a robot? Please. That's enough, Jack. Sorry, sir. Proceed. I see that you have already met your team. Let me introduce them to you. Sarah Gaynor, specialist in psychiatrics and brain genetics. After all we've heard, it's a pleasure to meet the legend at last, Sergeant. Ooh, the legend. <coughs> Dr. Paul Zines... Uh, well, his name's <coughs> a little difficult for me here. Dr. Paul Zines is expert in bacteriology, bionics, and former chief of the Countervaral Department of the Concellar Federation. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. Our job at Xenikos is just as important as fighting terrorists. Don't undermine this mission by taking it as a quote-unquote punishment. They won't, Doctor. Donald Gaynor, specialist in robotics and electromechanics. Eh, I'll be in charge of the maintenance of our ship and equipment. Also, as I told the commander earlier, I'm bringing with us this experimental robot model I've named BR-4N Dawn. Experimental in what way? Well, it's discarded... <coughs> well, it's a discarded project of the Consular Federation. Essentially, I gotta find like a better way to say this guy's name. Let's see, what would be the easiest way? We'll just call him Robot. Robot is an empathetic android. He was designed to analyze human emotions and status to try and pleasure its owner and guests. Or, and please. But say, that's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> the project was deemed a failure though, since after a couple of years, the empathetic mod module became overridden with its owner's personality and the droids suffered an existential crisis with well undesired consequences how useful the model has been customized by me personally <coughs> by formatting its brain once a year I promise you the robot is totally safe also it's not for pleasure Okay. <laughs> when requested he'll give us various readings of our performance moods and mor morale throughout a mission and can help us notably improve our productivity. Quite freaky in my opinion. I'm sad to hear that, but I'll do my best, sir. Come on, Sarge, don't be mean to him. You may end up liking him. Gentlemen, you'll have to you'll have time to talk about personal details on the ship to Sinicos. Dismissed. Wait a second. What about the dog? What about the dog? Fucking doctor, it's not wise to have a dog inside a lab. My ass. 
The same dog has served the Everdust better than most of the soldiers on the ship. Knock it off, Jack. Dr. Zinez only wants the best for the mission. He'll end up liking Marvin. Everybody does. Good boy. Lunch again. I thought I missed my arm when that psycho cut it off. But now I, <clears throat> but now I understand why there are people who sacrifice a limb just to get one of this one of just to get one of this awesome bionics. Let's get some English issues. It's not very popular with the ladies though. But for a soldier, I couldn't dream of a better arm. You should totally give it a try. <laughs> no thanks. I like to be popular among the girls. You? Ha. Don't make me laugh. I've never I've never seen you looking at a single woman. So, you keep track of who I'm looking at? Oh, fuck off. Good boy. Let's do back to work. And then she said, I thought it was a mercurial snake. Oh boy. Man, you are sick. Welcome back, gentlemen. How's the research going, Doc? Excellent. Sarah and I detected what causes paralysis within the Medusa virus. It attacks the muscles with a parasit parasitarian live net, but also freezes the user, inducing a chemical coma. It then keeps the vital functions running to create a perfect environment for spores to start growing in the victim's body. Sarah and I reduced the, the amount of possible compounds to five, so we are pretty close to finding a cure. We'll probably be able to leave the Senecos in a couple of months. A couple of months? Oh man. Cheer up, Jack. The estimated completion of this project was set at a year and a half. What? I have to start reading the mission briefings? I would have deserved I would have deserved it if I knew that. Hello everybody. Oh boy, not these guys. Abraham Man, how are you how are you? Or should I call you Sergeant Burden? Liam. Don't worry, man, you had a job to do. No hard feelings. I'm glad you made it out of the Holistic Empire prison. After all, you and your team will come in handy right now for Zena Liffer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I heard you say you're researching a cure for the Medusa virus. Cut the crap, Liam. What do you want? How rude, Jack. After all we've been through, I hoped you'd be glad to see me. To answer your question, though, I want you to give us the cure for the Medusa virus, and I want it now. Excuse us, Mr. Liam. We are far from discovering one at this point. There's still a lot of work to do. Oh, that's that's too bad, especially since I'm a little bit of a little bit of a rush. I'm in a little bit of a rush right now. Fine, I'll tell you what. Discover your cure by tomorrow, and you won't die. What? That's impossible. Don't underestimate yourself, lady. The threat of death can be a wonderful motivator. What's that they say? Necessity is the mother of invention. No. Shaman can provide that motivation. Shaman? Indeed, C4 has been motivating humanity for centuries. Jack, calm down. Liam, listen to me. You're a reasonable man. I'm sure we can find a peaceful solution here. Oh, no, no, no. You won't talk your way out of this, Sergeant. I know you, Burden. You can survive this just like everything else. After all, you're a legend, aren't you? Time to prove it. Liam. Fuck fucking Xenolifer, fuck. Fuck fuckity fuck fuck. Oh my gods, we're going to die, aren't we? This can't be happening. Everybody, calm down. Liam is not an assassin. He wouldn't kill us for mere revenge. Tell me you're not defending that son of a bitch. Don't lose your cool, Jack. Excuse me. If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. We better start working fast and smart. Doctor, how much time do we have? Based on our research so far, we'll be dead in about 27.5 hours. That's plenty of time. 
Robot, how much debris do we have blocking the exit? 1,520 kilograms exactly, sir. Okay, that's a lot of work, but if we cooperate, we can dig all that shit out in time. You forget the fact that we're all... that we are all infected. Even if we get out, we'll be dead. Understood. Your mission, then, <clears throat> is to find a cure in less than 48 hours. That's impossible. Doctor? Well, there are some lines that can be crossed in order to speed up investigation. Cross them. What do you mean, doctor? Human experimentation. Are you insane? Are we just going to blindly shoot random compounds into ourselves? Well, we can choose between a certain death or a possible death. I don't know about you, but I'll take my chances. Sounds like a plan. Okay, listen everybody, start digging and follow the doctor's instructions. We have to avoid overworking ourselves in, th in this situation. Being well rested is just as important as working. I think Sarah and I can produce some synthetic accelerants through the use of the, of the chemical computer. Wow, a chemical computer. Sounds pretty cool. Adrenaline will speed up work and sedatives can help you rest better. There are some drawbacks, doctor. Adrenaline will make you feel pretty tired after a while due to overworking and sedatives will leave a person knocked out for a good bit of time. But it's a good way to recover faster. Right, in any case, we should work mainly on developing an antidote. What steps should we follow, Doctor? Step one, produce an antidote. Step two, inject it into someone. Not me, please. Step three, pray. Finally, step four, if the subject endures a shot, we analyze their blood and see what went wrong or see what went right and what went wrong. Then repeat. I'm a little lost. Don't worry, focus on leading the team. If you want to know more about any aspect of the research, just ask me. Okay. Since time is crucial, we should work in spans of 30 minutes. Use the clock on the right top of, of the computer to begin work sessions. After every 30 minutes of work, we can reassess the situation. Okay, Everdust team, let's... Wait a second. What? The power supply seems to have been damaged. We can't let the battery drop below zero or we're screwed. And how the hell do we avoid that? Sir, I volunteer myself to connect the broken power supply. Donald, is it safe? Well, the robot is tough as hell. It might actually work. And I can do maintenance on him so he doesn't get toasted. Doctor, you can, sac you can sacrifice me and leave me as a permanent connection so power won't be a problem anymore. No way. I need you digging as much as everyone else. Yes, sir. Okay, Everdust team. Oh. Yes, doctor? Sorry, just wanted to remind you that what we found in research prior. If any of us experience paralysis, we can fight it with a temporary jolt of electricity. That's why the defibrillator unit is here. I can do the preparations. We can have up to three charges on standby for use. In the meantime, you get to skip digging, don't you? Those are the benefits of having a wider set of skills other than just shooting things. Hey, that's enough. Okay, everyone knows what they have to do. Everdust team? Burden. What? <laughs> just kidding, go ahead. Jerk. Oops, sorry. Everdust team, let's do this. Thank you all for watching the first part of chapter 3. In the next video, we'll be finishing off chapter 3 to see if we can't get out of this cave alive. See you then.